1981, I got my driver's license. I was 16 years old. From that day on, I don't think, in fact, for probably the first six months, I drove every opportunity I could get. I remember specifically, Road and Track had this fold-out where the page unfolded into a little cut-out poster, and it was this car. It was a Ferrari 288 GTO. I remember looking at it going, wow, it's a 308 on steroids. It was this massively big ass wide hip freaking car and I just I had to have it. This car was always a car that was a dream car of mine. Back in around 2005 I saw this particular car advertised on I think it was Auto Trader at the time. You know it was a 308 that you know had this body kit on it and it wasn't a real 288 GTO. It was short and stubby but I pulled the trigger on it, bought it, and it just sat there for the longest time because I realized it wasn't a real car, it wasn't a real 288. When Adrian came into the picture, and I've seen all of his work, I'd been working with Adrian and you, you know, because you guys came over from your own business and, and partnered up with me, it was so much fun to know that, hey, I, this is gonna actually happen. The idea was to take a car that was engineered in the mid 80s and put it on the road today that performs well like a lot of the new cars do, but also have all the modern conveniences that you see in a new car. And so that's what essentially this is. It's a throwback, but it's retro in the sense of the styling overall. But now we have big wheels, big brakes, bigger motor, bigger turbos. Everything makes more power. Yeah. Modern, day, modern day stuff that's available now is just it's so much better than what it was in the 80s. Yeah, it's nostalgic to have that big single wastegate with big twins, but man, they were so laggy in the 80s. It was an NA motor high compression that we then twin turboed, so yeah. the response, the spool time, everything about this is worlds better than what existed back then. I had a friend that was going to Italy, and he called me from Italy, and he said he just visited the plant that had all the original molds to a Tweety at GTO, I mustered up the guts to write a check and I transferred funds, sent in the money. Real 288 GTO fenders, real 288 GTO quarters, real 288 GTO bumpers, front and rear valances, roof skin, I mean, B pillars, yeah. which is really, you know, part of the roof skin, yeah. deck lid, you know, hood or bonnet, you would say. Uh, there's just so many, you know, rocker sills Quarter that are windows. flared quarter windows, glass, everything. The amount of money that's gone into this build has just been extraordinary. So I 
just gave it 60% more. Now we're ballpark. challenges that we ran into because I had different guys working on it and different guys promising me the world. We really struggled with how to make this thing into a functional, fun car. Yeah, because when my dad got it in 2010, he started sorting through the project and like, where's all the parts? Where's everything I need to like get my head around this thing? We just never settled on anything. And so he was just like, Let's just start over. The only thing that stayed was the cockpit. It's so over-engineered, this thing, in terms of structural integrity. If there's a nickname for over-engineered, that is... This is... Yeah. That guy's middle name yeah. back there. It's really safe to say that th this car is going to stand the test of time. When Adrian came into the picture and said, well, let's do a more modern drivetrain, a real modern Ferrari drivetrain, and let's make it all Ferrari, and let's not put anything other than Ferrari stuff in it. it seems like $100,000 later, we had to purchase two 360 Modinas, one yeah. Spider, one Coupe, a front half of one and a back half of another, bought another 328 GTS, because I wanted the dash, and I wanted the apron of the uh, 328. We kept the platform, the floor, and the platform is 308, and that's why it retains the 308 VIN. Everything else is a hodgepodge of Ferrari stuff. So you've got 328 stuff, you've got 360 Modena uh, stuff, and 360 Spider stuff. Yeah, there's only two parts on this car that are non, to make it better, that are non-OEM Ferrari, and that's the rack and the power steering pump. Yeah. We partner with everybody that we know in the industry that we already use on other projects. So we partnered with Clutch Masters to get the clutch sent out and figured out because all the stuff for Ferrari only, like they don't generally have clutch kits when you go to Twin Turbo your 360 Modena. There's only a handful of shops that have done this previously. We ship the clutch and flywheel package to Clutch Masters. We're like, hey, this is gonna make, I don't know, build it for 700 horsepower, but we want stock style pedal feel. We don't really wanna change the pressure plate too much because we want it to be drivable. but with the help of the tilt and pedal box and their clutch setup. The pedal feel is like newer Honda now. And again, had we not had that relationship with Clutch Masters, we wouldn't have even thought to be like, hey, let's send the whole package to them. Let them figure out the science of it and get us a package back that works. Yeah. And it worked. Literally start up, straight to the dyno. Oh my God, it sounded so bitching when it fired. My only concern is that it's just a tad bit too loud. It is a little loud. <laughs> And I'm praying to God we can quiet it down just a little bit because, you know, pulling this in and out of the garage or going anywhere, it's just, oh my God. That's the other thing is that we've only ever started it and revved it in a closed warehouse. And the fact that there's what looks like two fuel doors, one's for a 288 GTO, one of the doors is actually an oil door right. for the dry sump from the factory, yeah. the 288 setup. So what we decided to do is put saddle tanks on each side and Adrian had to build quite a bit of insulation work to prevent any overheating issues. My biggest concern on any kind of build like this is when you have super hot exhaust manifolds just inches away from fuel cells scares the crap out of me. So he just did such an amazing job engineering all of the insulation and paneling that separates yep the fuel cells from the engine bay, which is amazing. You know, there's an expectation that you're gonna have to make unique parts. For instance, the windshield moldings, we were able to find those, but the actual window frames that hold the uh, wind wing mm. and mm -hmm. the window frame itself, there was only a passenger side. Yep. There was no driver's side available anywhere. It didn't exist. And it's unique to a 288 GTO. God, we had to task Adrian at making it from scratch. And it's just 
totally unbelievable to look at it and see it next to the OEM part. And you can't tell them apart. But now, once they're freshly powder coated, there's no there's no telling them apart. Nope. And the thing and that's is, that's how the stuff is made from Ferrari anyway. Exactly. If you look at the well, it's like the little rubber seal <laughs> that actually holds the mirrors onto the doors. Yeah, which we only uh, had one. They only had one in stock. Couldn't yeah. find another one for the life of us. So we had to scan it. We had to rely on Richard to actually, you know, print us out a mirrored version of that one. God forbid, if you knock on wood, if you ever have a fender bender, what do you do? I mean, what do you do? As a safety precaution, first thing I did is I had molds made of all four corners of this car, yeah. just as a security blanket, knowing that if there was ever an issue, you know, at least I'd have a replacement part. You don't have to turn. Because he's gonna have to move stuff, so. Turn, leave it there. Basically, yeah, so like all I had to do was put LS 
five all on, and then LS six all off. Do a full pull, and then vice versa. Do a full pull, and then blend the two. You know, obviously built to compete in Class B racing that never really came into fruition and kind of sat naturally high, as all Class B cars did. And so a 288 GTO has this massive, you know, clearance from the wheel, from the top of the wheel to the fender. Yeah. We wanted the car to sit a little lower. Adrian had to pretty much mock up the back half of the 360 Spider that we bought and make all of that componentry out of steel. And it had to be exact so that it would hold the 360 suspension, the brakes, everything so that we could run it. We didn't want the drivetrain to think that it was in anything other than a Modena or Spider. The amount of work is insane. I can't even, I, I mean, I think back through the years and mind you, it's been so many years this thing's been in, in the process of being built that it, it really is mind blowing to think about. When it came to the body and when it came to perfecting the paint and the body on this car, you know, these cars weren't manufactured in a way that everything was precisely fitted as they are today. <laughs> so I mean, Ferrari didn't perfect it for a long time. Yeah, it wasn't an issue for them. It just wasn't a priority. When the panel fitment was concluded by Adrian, he got it so close for Joe. It was work but it wasn't nearly as hard as starting from scratch. This car is designed just like a real 288 GTO. When you wanna pull the drivetrain out, there's just a few things that you have to do to prep the engine to drop down, but it's set up to be unbolted. The car goes on the lift, the whole entire transaxle engine, everything comes down with the suspension for easy servicing. And that was all part of the engineering that Adrian put into the development of this car. When it went to Joe to start prepping it for paint, there was final fitment of the front fenders, 
the doors and then the bumper assemblies and the, the lower diffusers front and rear that had to be kind of pre-fit and engineered so that they look like they belong on the car. <laughs> These are fiberglass panels. The only thing that is not fiberglass on this car, as is the case with real 288 GTOs, are the doors. The doors are the only steel components on this car. And if you look at a 288 GTO, up near where the windshield wipers are, you'll see that the edges of the, of the hoods are kind of not perfectly lined up with the fenders. I didn't like that. We kind of added a little bit more curvature to our, our bonnet so that it fit better. And so once all that was completed and once I laid eyes on it every day with Joe, probably drove Joe crazy, but he knows how I am. And so we had to pre-fit these badges. Badges? We don't need no stinking badges. Oh, no. Badgers? Badgers? We don't need no stinking badgers! Badges? Badges? You know, that's a good idea. Maybe we should get some badges. Shit, this car changed color in our minds four times. Five. Five times. So Red is always the go-to. So, yeah, R Rosa Corsa Red was always the go-to color. That was the original <laughs> red that the 288 GTO was made in. It only came in one color. You know, you'll see a yellow one floating around, a fly yellow you'll see floating around. Uh, that was one of their pre-production cars that Ferrari built, but all... 288 GTOs came out in the Rosa Corsa Red. And so that was our go-to color. At one point, I thought about white, then fell in love with black. And I'm a huge fan of TDF Blue. Tour de France Blue is one of my favorite colors. The last one was British Racing Green. Yeah, British Racing Green was a color option. And there's then I just, just... There's so many details that go away when this car is right. black. Or any dark color, essentially... A yeah. Red or white would have been fine, but any of the other three colors, yeah, that's we true. lose so much detail. Rosa Corsa Red won. And, uh, red uh, or dead. We literally just went out, bought the material, spent $3,000 just on the paint and material for this car. There was no more thinking about other options. It was Although, literally just for paint. Yeah, yeah, that was paint. literally just paint. Red is always the fastest <laughs> color. Ask any cop.
and the wheels, you know, yeah. remember we wanted a true authentic looking Ferrari wheel. So this is the, so like everything on this car, this car has gone through two revisions at minimum per each part of the project. First set of wheels were ADV1 custom wheels. Good looking wheel. Really good looking wheel, which we still have. But now we found a company called uh, Ravel, RVL. I don't know if they still exist, but at the time they were the only ones doing aftermarket center lock adapters. We wanted somebody that would let us pick our own specs and specify exactly what kind of depth we wanted, where we wanted the hardware to show, what we didn't want it to show. Like there was a lot of details in this wheel to get it to look the way it does. Now, outside of the color that we might change because it's too, it's not too light gray. enough. Yeah. yeah, we want a little lighter silver. Outside of that, all the other details of the wheel are spot on yeah. the way we wanted it. Yeah. It's a newer, modern idea of the center lock five spoke traditional Ferrari wheel in an 18, not a 16 because the mm, brakes yeah. are so big. Not only going to put a 360 Modena drivetrain in it, I wanted to have the twin turbos that the 288 GTO had. We're like, oh shit, okay. So fast forward a few years, turbo technology has advanced, and this car ended up at Richards, which is now Works Corsa, to design and make the Garrett Motion turbos fit and look symmetrical in the engine base. So you have Turbonetics cord intercoolers making the end tank symmetrically and trying to figure out a system to make the exhaust flow properly because exhaust gases on a turbo car, especially when it's wide together, is all it's all the business. How do yeah. you get the boost to be regulated? How do you get the, the exhaust to flow? Where can you put a muffler if you need to? which is exactly what we're, we're just... starting to go through now. Yeah. Because of how high pitched the tone of the 360 Modena motor is, we thought it was gonna be dialed down with the turbos, but it's not. Yeah. It's very high pitched. It revs to 8,500, almost 9, yeah. we can- Almost 9,000. Yeah. yeah. And at that high end note with the turbos just screaming out those pipes and the wastegates opening- Ear piercing. This thing is insane. <laughs> It's awesome, yeah. but again, like you said, when you start this in your garage, you're in an enclosed environment where it's shut down and it's extremely loud. We have to task Richard or Adrian to figure out or make a muffler system that'll work and dumb down the noise a little bit. Which is gonna be interesting. Yeah, and then with how the turbos were mounted fairly low with respect to the motor and everything, we had to also then design a oil scavenging pump. So then it'll suck the oil from the turbos and then return it to the dry sump system because without that, it smokes. The oil doesn't make it back to the dry sump, so then it starts coming out the tailpipe. It's dumping it into the exhaust. Yeah. Because it has nowhere to go. If it's not being suctioned out, the oil has nowhere to go but through the exhaust. How do we fix that? We make the scavenge pump work. Because <laughs> we don't know, like this car has been Put together completely, dynoed, everything worked great. Okay, cool, take it all apart. We gotta paint it.
All right, so like a small breakdown on the motor. Again, stock 360 Modena drivetrain, but everything around it has been in some way manhandled or molested to make do the things we want it to do. So twin Garrett G3660 turbos, one reverse rotation, so everything looks symmetrical. Turbonetics intercooler cores, turbo smart blow off valves, and twin 45 millimeter wastegates or 50s. Don't know. Twin turbo, I think, dang it. I think I put 50s on everything. Twin 50 millimeter wastegates, so it's one per turbo, and they are both Garrett G3660s. One of them is reverse rotation, so that way we can get the symmetry in the engine bay. Twin turbo smart blow off valves, turbonetics intercooler cores. Like I mentioned, we have that oil scavenging pump that is filling everything back to the dry sump. In the fuel system though, for those two custom fuel cells, we have it set up where one tank is your fuel level, which is nearest the driver's side. And on the passenger side has twin aeromotive 340 liter per hour fuel pumps. That was in respect to get ready. If we decided to put this car on E85, we have enough fuel flow for about 800 horsepower now. We're not at that point. Right now on 91 pump gas, we are making just under 500 wheel horsepower and it is only at about five or six PSI of boost. That is solely wastegate pressure. We are not putting any duty cycle into it. Now we throw E85 into the mix. We have all the lines, all the injectors are all ready for E85. We are running, I believe, 1000 cc or 1300 cc injectors. Can't remember, too many cars. Enough fuel to at least make six, 700 horsepower out of this setup. So you wanna turn this car into the 288 Evolutione. We'll make 650, not to the crank, it'll make it to the wheels. But we also don't want to sacrifice the longevity of this 360 Modena motor. It's safe right now at the power level that it's at. It is more than plenty. We are going to scale the car and see what it weighs. And thanks to Leonard over at Swift, he's been going back and forth with us for the spring rates on the suspension so we can get the ride height and how comfortable the car is to drive around every day dialed in with the right spring rates. The list is so long in custom modifications, it's insane. You know, I know people are going to ask, oh, what would it cost to build another one? I, I don't know, a lifetime? Today? I, I, yeah. I, how do you even put a dollar on it? It's like <laughs> you start from scratch and it's it's not even a money issue. It's how old are you? If you're, if you're in your 60s or 70s, don't bother. You're not going to be able to enjoy the car. Yeah. When I was little, I used to look at grown-ups with money and cars and think, wow, that looks fun. I can't wait. This blows. <laughs> I have to pay for everything. So guys, if you want to continue to follow this project, stay tuned. Would you guys go to this extreme to build your dream car? If you had the means, would you do it? I'm curious. I feel like a lot of you guys probably would. And we all have different dream cars. Tell us what your dream car is. Please hit us up in the comments. Give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, Please think about doing so. It helps us out immensely. And guys, share this video with your friends. If you like this kind of content, the more you pass this information on to people that we don't know, this is where the happy people are. <laughs> so stay tuned and we'll see you next time. It's no horns. Like Dan said, this car came about with like five different Ferraris and no one... Oh, but he can't hear us because he has his headphones on. It's fucking. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh. Crap, holy. Oh, that's cold. Oh, that's cold. All right, guys, so five Ferraris walk into a shop. What do you end up with? <laughs> <laughs> and what do you get? What do you get? You get this! Um, ow, you know, do you guys realize I'm not sitting on a seat? Uh, I can't, they can't even see the seat behind me, I'm so fat. <laughs> well, and, and it's a tiny block seat. It. <laughs> and here we sit, 20 years later, five ding-dongs later, thousands and thousands and th millions <laughs> of dollars later. This is the one video where Daryl's shorter than you, Alex. I know. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> how many could dogs you can you fit in here? I mean, one Daryl equals how many dogs? I don't know. Nine. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we could fit nine dogs on that side, dude. I'm going to get out backwards with my ass hanging out there. Ah, oh, what the f***? Just... I have no idea. Oh, the mic. Cracked. Okay. Okay. What was that? Oh, that's fine. It's the mic. Oh, oh, oh. shit. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Are you okay? Man, it's like the freaking, when they rang, when they crashed that satellite into the moon. What well, rung? The <laughs> lift or your head? For, it's going <laughs> to run for a while. Oh, f***. Mic check.